you're you're starting to take care of yourself better. You know, you've created some space around food. You've already put down the cell phone. You're already more present with your food. And now that next step that's so difficult, this next step, by the way, is where you write before you eat. It's, it's challenging. I get it. And one of the biggest blocks to this writing process is the shame that you are not doing this right, that you you are so bad at this, you're, you're comparing yourself to others, that other people are doing it better than you, and, and it, this, that sense of failure that comes up. So I want to show you a brief clip from an interview with Holly. And, and Holly's, she's gorgeous, but she has struggled with binge eating for 20 years, all right? She's gone through hell and back with food. So take her words, let them enter your, into your heart, into your heart. And then after the clip, I'll talk a little bit more about how you can really begin to integrate writing into your food journey. All right, let's see what Holly has to say about failure. You can't fail it. Right? You can't. you can't fail it. Like you can't fail something that's like yeah. inherently intuitively you, right? Yeah. Was this something that we're coming back to? And it's going to take some trial and error and like weeding out stuff that's like not actually yours, right? That's a like conditioned, um, but you can't fail. It's, it's simply feedback. Mm. And so can you get really curious in that, in that circumstance when you ate past the point of fullness mm. and ended up being really uncomfortable? Mm. Hmm. Let me get curious about that. What did I eat that day? Hmm. Oh, actually, you know what? I skipped lunch that day. Oh, wow. No wonder I ate more cheese and I ate past the point of fullness. I was actually really, really hungry and my body was in reaction to hunger. Interesting. Yes. Or did I have a really stressful day that day? And was I coming to it from a disembodied experience and I actually wasn't present and I yes, wasn't paying yes. attention? Yes. That part of it. Uh -huh. um, was, you know, was I mindless? Was I being mindless? Was I, was I, yeah, like, was I disembodied? So much of it, mm. it ends up being disembodied. Oh, yeah, it is. And it's, and it's like, okay, can I, can I notice that? And know that that means nothing about me as a human I love being. It. I love that I'm it. good. I'm enough. I'm mm. worthy just as I am. Mm. And, and can I then, put measures in place. Like, Oh, next time, you know, mm. next time I'll, I'll choose. Like I'll, I'll like, if, if I had a stressful day, I'm still allowed to eat cheese, but maybe, oh, maybe I do some breathing exercises before, or, Oh, is this a reminder for me that I need to make sure that I'm eating a really nourishing lunch. Right. So I'm having enough food in my body so that later I'm not reacting out of starvation. Absolutely. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's summarize. Holly says to notice failure and to be curious about it. She says to notice why, like what's coming up when you are going through a, a when you have overeaten past the point of fullness, she says to notice why. That's something that's really useful too. And she, she spoke about noticing things like, you know, were you stressed? Were you not eating enough? And those are, those are great. They're really, really useful. And that brings me to the necessity of writing down what you are thinking and feeling before you eat. This practice, writing what you are thinking and feeling before you eat, will transform your relationship with food. When you have this simple guideline, write down what you are thinking and feeling before you eat. It's very simple to remember, but it's incredibly difficult to actually practice. It's incredibly difficult to actually practice it. But if you are able to really start, not all the time, but just start writing down a few things, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm hungry. I'm stressed. You know, sometimes a thought that comes to mind is that you have to clean the plate. You have to finish the plate off, right? Well, if you're able to write down that thought before you eat, you'll have a chance to then examine that thought and you'll be able to see the beliefs underneath that thought, where that thought came from, the tone in which you are thinking the thought, how that thought resonates in your body. Don't get me wrong. This is, this is subtle. This is subtle work. All right. This is subtle, difficult work. Like Holly said, you have to, it's like 
uh, it's like pulling out weeds. There's sort of this like this process where you're just kind of you're just kind of going through this writing process, letting your thoughts get out on paper so that you can see them. It's extraordinarily tough. It's extraordinarily tough. But it's so necessary. It's so powerful to make a discipline. Nothing too intense. Nothing too intense here. Just writing down what you're thinking, what you're feeling, where you ate, where is very important, the time. Takes one minute. Now, will this make you think more? Yeah, it will. If you practice this way of writing for a week or two weeks, that preoccupation will go down. Do you have to do it before every meal? Try to. Try to. Really try. By writing down, you're forced to pause. By writing stuff down, you're forced to see if you're skipping meals. You're forced to to see if you're if you're feeling stressed, right? These are these are huge things. If you're running around all day and you're stressed out and you want to stop binge eating, you, you know that thinking about things doesn't always work. What about writing? So, I know writing can bring up a lot of failure. I know it can be difficult. But to expect that this is going to be difficult, to expect that you're going to feel like a failure as you go through this process, and that it's okay. It's okay. Like Holly said, a feeling of failure is, is feedback. It, it doesn't mean anything about you personally, I, and I know that's hard to believe, but I'm, I'm really, really asking you to, to put your faith and, and your trust in this next stage of your healing journey to, to start practicing, you know, a gentle practice. Maybe you just start off with writing a thought before you eat, you know? Maybe that's one week. You just write down what you think before you eat. Maybe the next week you're, you're adding in a feeling. Maybe the next week you're adding in the time and the place or, or whatever. Maybe you start off with the time and the place, you know? I'm eating in my car, it's 3 p.m., etc. cetera. Um, this is not a calorie journal. This is not um, this is not a calorie journal. It will make you more aware of your food. It will be it will be tough in some ways. It will be tough to to make a practice of writing before you eat. It will be tough. I get that, but it's not that hard. I'm not asking you to weigh your food or to say you had five slices of bread. You could just write bread. You know, be easy about it. But we're mainly about we're mainly about the psychology. You know, noticing when the emotions you eat and so forth. And when you see this, when you see this over time, when you go through this writing process, um, give it a month, your life will change. This is the next stage. If you're at the point where you, where you're able to sit with a meal, that's tough. Like that is tough, right? If you're at that point where you can sit down with a meal and, and, and not, um, and not need your cell phone or distract yourself, you can just be there. The next stage is sort of where the, the real rubber hits the road. It's where the, you know, the, the caterpillar turns into the cocoon. And the cocoon, you go through this writing process. And there's magic when, when pen goes to paper. Um, you know, just, uh, just coming back to that cleaning the plate analogy, by writing down your thoughts before you eat, you will see your thoughts right? You'll have thoughts that are in your subconscious mind that you, you don't know you have, that you're, that you might think you're a failure or that you have to do this all on your own or that, or that, um, you know, that you, that this is your one opportunity to have crackers and cake. You know, that might be a thought that comes up. I'm not, this is my one chance to have crackers or whatever. And so this, this guideline journal before you eat, it's simple. You can, you can, feel that. You can feel that. Journal before you eat. It's simple. Will it be difficult? Yes. It'll be difficult to do because your momentum will be carrying you on to the next meal. But this is not too tough. It's just, like I said, a minute. Time, place, one thought. That's You can do that. Time, place, a little bit about what you ate, one thought. That's a minute. 
the difficult part is is doing it. But this simple rule, it's hard to forget, journal before you eat. This simple rule can kind of get in that subconscious mind. Oh yeah, I have to journal before I eat, right? That subconscious mind can, that thought can get in that brain. It'll make you pause. It'll make you pause before you eat. It'll give you a chance in the moment, in the moment, in the moment to, um, to see how this binge comes up in the moment. And we put our faith in awareness. Awareness is like light, all right? It heals, it burns, it's, it, burn, it burns you, but it heals you at the same time. Don't get me wrong, this is painful, but hopefully this video helps. Um, love to know your thoughts. Okay, thanks for watching, namaste.